apologize to everyone. It's other composite rock, and I, I have really the pleasure to have with us Jimmy from Kicking Valentina. First of all, how's it going, Jimmy? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm a little bit tired, but I'm good. I'm good. You're much too young to be tired. Uh, well, 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 well. You're much too young to be tired. I'm not too young. I'm in the mid. I am in the. I'm, 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 I'm aging. I'm aging. Thank you for saying that I'm good, young. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, first of all, congratulations for that. How the single is going, the new release is going. It's going really well. The music is amazing, and especially uh, Star. I have the guy. I have from Star Spangled Fi <laughs> Fist Fight is going to be released. And then we're going to talk about it, of course, a little bit about the past of the release of the band, because, of course, it's the first time you are on Poison Rock, so we have to get to know the band. But before we get to know the band, we have to get to know you, Jimmy. So sure. your musical background. So a little bit of story, let's say, of journey in uh, Jimmy as a kid, you know, like a young kid just getting closer with music. So how, you, how was, how you go... I mean, arrived. I don't want to say until kicking Valentina, but at least when you start picking the drum. Yeah. Um, well, I picked up the guitar at seven years old. Okay. Um, and then put the guitar down at eight years old and discovered playing sports. So I was an athlete. I played baseball, basketball, and football. Okay. And then um, I was introduced to MTV. And uh, okay. I uh, started beating on my mother's pots and pans and bar stools at the house. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, just watching, you know, oh. all the videos on MTV and stuff like that back in the 80s where, you know, most of my drumming influences come from, you know, Dokken and Motley Crue. Yeah, and White that's what, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what Striper was, and, and yeah, all, the, well, all, the, all the hair, all the hair bands. You know what I'm saying? Golden um, age. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then, and then I, you know, I started listening to classic rock like Kiss and Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And of course, John Bonham is God. So, um, you know, the Bonham style drumming is kind of where I, Tommy Lee, yeah. John Bonham, Tommy Aldridge, yeah. uh, Mickey D from Motorhead, that kind of, that kind of influence rock is roll, kind of where I kind of rock and roll, lazy, punkish. Yeah. yeah, you know, heavy up tempo. Um, yeah. I was never really into the ballad thing, so okay. like you know, the, the Warrants and the okay. who else had a lot of ballads? Eh, most Star. of the eighties bands had ballads, but Star. you know, I, I, was, I was more. Yeah, I was more into like the the Rat, yeah. Dokken, Motley Crue, Scorpions, Vibe. yeah, by Van Halen, that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, I can go, we can name bands yeah. all day long. I listen to all of them because I liked this, all of them. Yeah, this is my genre too. So we can go talking about uh, even White Snake for 10 and days long. I can right. keep on talking about their music for all my life. I mean, right. so, I mean, so I have one side here for a reason. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I started playing drums at uh, 15 years old. Never took any lessons. I'm self-taught. It was just, I learned it from mm -hmm. listening to music and translating that onto a drum kit and my uh, mother used to tell me i used to hold you when i was pregnant huh. with you i used to hold you up uh, led zeppelin up to my stomach i was like all right there you go so <laughs> that's how uh, so your mom like, basically show you the path even before you were yeah. born so that's what she saying? says i don't know how, i don't know how true it is but that's what she says <laughs> never never question the mom Sad from that's, sad that's, from the, someone from Sicily. Don't forget that. Oh well, well, yeah, I know. Mom. I know all about it. Italian moms. I get it. <laughs> they can have like the the wooden stick. I need you with that. Oh yeah, the wooden spoon. Stir the yeah. stir the gravy. Smack you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, like of course, like you mentioned, all my favorite band as well. Like many of them, and uh, did I think as well influence a lot? Let's say the music and the sound of Kiki Valentina. But before talking about Kiki Valentina, like I was asking you before, what the fuck Kiki Valentina? Who is Valentina? Well, what we tell people is that there is an old 70s, early 80s fetish porn star okay. from Germany named Valentina. And her fetish was kicking guys in the balls. <laughs> oh, look, we have a guest. Guests. Oh. 
Oh, that's- yes. That's my baby. She's raised in hell. She's fucking with the cat. <laughs> no, but you're welcome. We, we, we don't love it anymore. Yeah. You want to say hi? Hi. It's beautiful. She, she's, we love her anymore. She can be the, the, the guest. The plus yes, one. Yes, my special guest. I'll just lean over to the side here and we can focus in on her. Yeah. <laughs> and talk about her just, last release. Yeah. I just rescued her like back in July. So she's a puppy. Oh, that's so, yeah, that's, that, that's really good of you. That's really good. It's uh, yeah. something that I really care about, and Me too. Uh, that moved a lot. And uh, it's important if you can rescue yes. an animal, uh, no matter dog, cat. I will even rescue a bear. To be honest, I, 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 deers just never leave me in a farm alone. I, I'm dangerous. That's for sure. Right. Just just back to so you were you were talking about the name. So that's how the name, let's say. You picked up. Came about. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where he kicking Valentina. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, porn star, Germany, fetish, kicking guys in the nuts. There you have it. There you have it. And of it course, works. Yeah, of course, like your song as well. It's, let's say, this kind of 80s fun. And, but it's not only just 80s fun. Uh, you know, like, I don't want to say hard rocks, there's the glamour role. Just, let's say it has a lot of, of all of these influences, the band that you mentioned, but as well, it's, it's not as well like because sometimes you have this new band performing and playing a kind of a hard rock and glam rock and maybe sound like you know inspiring too much. I don't want, I don't want to say copy, but it's inspiring too much. I think Valentina is more like a kind of continuum of that period, you know? Like you keep yeah. on going like, oh hello, I love the- <laughs> I love this interview already. Oh <laughs> that's my Carter. I don't that's- know what you're doing, kiddo. <laughs> they're all over the place i got another one i got another one that you won't see a black cat too so <laughs> i want to see every cat every animal yeah. so like i said um this this amazing sound that you guys had this looks like really like a continuous of all let's say that the band that you mentioned it's like it never there has been i mean we know there has been a, like kind of a cut when a uh, grunge arrived uh, let's say that this genre died yeah i know yeah <laughs> But even if, if I started to play with Kurt Cobain, but forget about that. Um, yeah, I know, I know. That's terrible. It's all the same. I, I, if you want to talk about that real quick, I, you know, I like some uh, Chris Cornell stuff, preferably yeah. more of his solo stuff. But um, and Alice in Chains had a couple really good yeah. records. But he, the other two bands that people talk about, <laughs> yeah, because that kind of stopped a, a, a lot of good bands that were starting back in the 90s a lot yeah i mean it's a lot i mean it ended ended careers like immediately like covid i mean grunge was like the covid of rock and roll there was a band i don't know if you would remember this band it was called every mother's nightmare they were amazing they were mad we played with them a bunch of times i love that yeah yeah Yeah. i grew up with these bands of taikato Even if it's more ballad, Taketo, let's say. Taketo, they're all friends of ours. San Magritte. I know, I know, I know, I know Danny. Danny's one of Danny, the Danny Bronze, a great guy. One of the best yeah. boys ever. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. He yeah, lives over are. in Spain. Yeah, that's a, I mean, uh, but of course we are here to speak about. So, kick him, so we just uh, pay homage to, let's say, to the band in the genre. But of course, like, how do you guys really like, I don't want to make like the story of Kiki Valentina, but just to say, the first day that you sit down and said, okay, this is Kiki Valentina. We're going out with the first release. So that day that you chose to be Kiki Valentina. Okay. When I put the band together with my guitar player, Heber, um, I had known him for maybe a year and a half, two years. Okay. Cause I bought all my, do- I bought all my dog food and cat food from him. Cause he owned a pet store, an organic pet That's store nice. for, for pet food. Um, and I had gone to the Sweden Rock Festival with my buddy here in Atlanta, and I stood in a downpour rain and completely with my jaw on the ground watching Hardcore Superstar. And I looked at my friend Rob and I said, dude, if these dudes can do this, so can I, because this is my shit right here, <laughs> you know? And he's like, dude, put a band together. So I got home and I started looking and I just started talking with Heber. And when him and I started kind of like just messing around with the guitar yeah. riffs and, you know, 
me putting a beat to it and stuff like that. We're like, look, you want to do this? If we're going to do this, we're going to go all the way. We need to get a label. We're going to tour Europe. We're going to tour the UK. We're going to, we're just, we're not going to go play bars and play cover tunes. I'm like, okay, dude, let's do this. So yeah. Yeah. So him and I started writing and then we found our bass player who was in the scene and Chris, Chris and I gel magically. I, I, can't imagine really playing with another bass player um him and i lock in really well we're really tight um and um he he looks cool and uh he knows a lot about the business so that's good also um and then we 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 found our original singer which i don't talk about and then um dk came along about six years ago and he's you know he's our david lee roth so um, i mean that's an amazing voice yeah he's uh he, he does but he's very he's very talented I, yeah. yeah he's a, he's a good front man he's he's the man yeah. you know i, I love yeah. the guy when he comes into town he lives in california we live here in georgia yeah. when he comes into town he hangs with me here and him and i just you know we sit out back on the patio and smoke a little and drink a little so That's you know it's fun yeah, yeah yeah because starting just as a band as well now it's like having kind of a kind of a family members Like oh, it's like a marriage. It's like if you're married, trust me, we fight all the time. And then we have great times together. You know what I'm saying? Divorce, it's, you married again and you're in divorce. Oh, oh it's, I, it's a, it's a revolving you, door. Yeah. I hope that everything at the end is going to make peace just with the rehearsal, with the gigs. Let's say that that's the place when everyone may is happy and every, every fight ends. But that's the beauty of it because nothing is beautiful without a small fight. <laughs> well of course so, like like as well it's all like like the first album was uh almost 10 years ago yeah can you believe it 10 years ago so yeah. 25 it's gonna be so that we can expect something about that like kind of a 10th anniversary or something uh there could be something that you're doing like maybe uh, we'll get into the fan can see maybe some super tour i don't know who knows uh, i don't know i don't know <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with the old records. My singer's not too fond of singing the old songs. No, no, but I mean, in general, like as well, some surprise for the 10th anniversary in general, even just uh, some. Uh, I don't know. We haven't even discussed it. Okay. I don't, I don't even, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> a year, maybe, yeah. maybe in year 20, we can do something like that. I don't know. 10, uh, I don't know. Yeah. We're still, we're still, yeah, we're still writing, you know, writing music. So, I mean, yeah. we want to play the new stuff. You know? Yeah, because of course, like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the revenge is being uh, like, let's say we can, let, let, we can call it like a turning point album for Kiki Valentino, because I listen yep. as well, the sound changed and there is like, a, like, you know, harmony, there is this beautiful, I mean, there always been like this beautiful sound, but it's like you're like taking that, the road that I tell you at the beginning, keep on going when, you know, like the sunset strip still is there. Yeah. You, keep the, you keep the dream alive like uh, you know, that's beautiful because everyone that. that's that's what i can perceive when i listen to you yeah know. there was definitely there was definitely an evolution like you know a growth uh yeah. and a maturity when when dk joined the band you know when we did chaos in copenhagen yeah. um and then you know we put out revenge which was a good record yeah. and um uh, uh, now the new Yeah, my little man. Uh, and then, you know, Star Spangled Fist Fight, we're very excited about this record. We feel that like there's yeah. 10 great songs on that. I mean, we're yeah. playing eight of them live when we go out. So, I mean, we're playing a lot, a lot of those songs and um, a lot of catchy, anthem -y, you know, festival yeah. style, raise your fist and rock kind of just straight hard rock, you know? Yeah, because, like, if you just, we're just trying, we're just trying to write good songs. Because of course, like uh -huh. if we if we want like to, um, I'm not wanting to go like analyze or compare because I think it's always like an, you know an evolution and a growth of it as well. But if we we like right. to say, for example, even from from Revenge itself, so just the the lastest release and the, uh, the upcoming one, which just we said it's going to be out the 19th of April. Am I right? Yes, it's going to be out on 19th of April. What it could be like if uh, there is any. Like sound wise, maybe I don't know differences or maybe some new things that you brought. Um, I know I changed the way I played my drums a little bit. <laughs> um, we wanted something a little more heavier than Revenge of Rock. I think that happened too. Yeah. Um, I think that um, the songwriting 
is just better on this record than the last one. Not saying the last record isn't fantastic. I just think that uh, we stepped it up a notch, you know. Uh, That's uh, yeah. The production on that Andy Riley, our producer, did a fantastic job on the sounds. My drums sound amazing. The guitars, the vocals, everything's big. Um, a lot more m- melodic. Uh, choruses in the songs if you will still got that sleazy factor in the verses and in the opening riffs and stuff but when you get to the get to the choruses it's a lot more you know melodic vocals and backing vocals and i gotta sing and everybody in the band's gotta sing and so you know i mean i I, it's just a progression i think yeah it's not like 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 as well like a continuum i was growing up as well and as well it can be considered as well like i don't say like when i say consolidation but kind of uh, Maybe this one, like a turning point, for example. Right. Then revenge we'll itself. See. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I hope uh, yeah. I hope people latch onto this record and share with all their I mean, friends. And taking go, oh, a you, ride. You taking a ride is yeah. like, fucking amazing. So you can already... Uh, yeah, but I, this second single, this second single we just put out, Ride or Die, is my favorite song on the record. Ride or Die. How so? Yeah. I'm curious. How so? How so? Why is it uh, make it that, uh, your this your favorite song into the album? Uh, one, it's got energy. Two, I like the guitar riff. Three, I think the chorus is very sing along anthemy. Um, I just think it's a well written song. The guitar solo is cool. Um, it's just a good song. You know, there's another uh, one too on the record called "Turn Me Loose." That's very punk pop kind of. Uh, wow, that's a good one too. So yeah. We can say that we can have not only like, for example, for the lovers of uh, the lesbian hard rock and glam in general, we have more than that now. Oh, you... there's there's not one song on this record sounds like the other. That's there's a... so many different there's so many different influences on this record. Um, you know, taking a ride's kind of heavier song. You know, yeah. turn me loose is kind of punk pop. Ride or die has that anthem kind of feeling. Uh, mm-hmm. Dirty rhythm, which is going to be our next single, okay. has a really has a really big sleaze factor. Like the guitar riff is real sleazy, and it's just got a groove to it. Um, so there's, I mean, song after song on this, you know, fire back is, I helped write that song, um, as a drummer, bringing an idea to the, to the table. Yeah. My influences on that were not even glam. It was Foo Fighters and Stone Sour. Wow. You know, so, so I heard it. I, yeah. I just, I, I love Dave Grohl. You know, I don't care for him in Nirvana, but I think the Foo Fighters are cool. Yeah. Um, Corey Taylor, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care for Slipknot, but I like Stone Sour and I was, you know, yeah. just, going through youtube listening to music and i was like oh i kind of like that i kind of like that and i just sat down on the guitar mm-hmm. and i took my idea to chris and heber and they ran with it and fire back is like probably one of our heavier yeah. songs um kind of foo fighters motorhead stone sour uh, always with kicking valentina Yes, it always Uh, sounds like us. um, Right, exactly. And then, you know, there's a song called Amsterdam that's really bluesy that we wrote about sitting on a canal in Amsterdam on a day off on our last tour smoking weed. (laughs) Because, of course, it's uh, as well. I mean, um, I mean, people, I think they know that as well. But sometimes people forget that lazy and uh, glam and uh, they have a, a rock as well. It has a shade, a big shade of, of blues. A big. Yes. Don't forget. Yeah. Let's not yeah. forget that let me when he was playing blues. Yeah. That, that, that song. Yeah, I mean, and, and our music too is yeah. we're we're standard tuning. Most bands drop tune now. We don't use any backing tracks. We don't drop tune. Everything you get from us on stage live is us. There's no help anywhere. No, thank you. That said, something that came from you, from the core. And that's important because nowadays we're going to so fucking digitalize that, I don't know, maybe in a year or two, there will be holograms playing in the, in, 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 in the whatever, in yeah. the live. And so, a lot of, uh, there's yeah. a lot of, um, I call it cheating. But um, you know, I have, if bands, if bands, bands want to use tracks and they want to use special effects and all this production, yeah. have at it. That that's yeah. just not what we're about. Yeah, and and I mean, I think as well that the 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 the, the fan, the true fan, can can know that and can see that, can perceive that, because if you think about it, they are like let's say your fan base, they are at your live shows. So, so the meaning there is a following. So that's message you're sending is perceived. 
if there is people that are lobbying yeah. uh, AI, whatever it's called, that I don't even know how to pronounce it sometimes, let's leave it to their own imaginary world made of video games. That's not the life. That's not the life. The life is out there, outside. It's outside. Open the yeah. door. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Get drunk. Experience. That's life. That's life. And of course, like, I mean, uh, like you mentioned, but as well, like lyric wise, in, let's say just not, not only in the, in the last record, but lyric wise, which could be, I don't know, the main inspiration from Kikin Valentina. I don't know, it could be life, nature, experience, anything you, anything, even just, I don't know. Um, well, don't know. our singer DK writes, Okay. The, you know, the lyrics, we, okay. it's with him living in California, you know, we have to record music here, yeah. write the mm -hmm. songs here, and then we got to send them to California. Yeah, and sure. then he picks the songs apart and puts a melody to them. And then he yeah. sends back the ideas. And it's like, you know, it's tough sometimes, yeah. you know, because we're not all in this, we're not all in the same room, yeah. you know, but um, if you know, we've never played these songs live mm -hmm. together in the same room, this re this record was studio, you know. Yeah. Um, we wrote it uh, via like emails. Yeah. And then when we got in the studio and we had our parts all worked out, we recorded it. And now we're the band. Like I have a rehearsal tonight with Heber and Chris, and we're rehearsing the music. And then DK yeah. will get here a couple of days before we go over to Europe, and we'll go over all the back uh, the background vocals and all the vocal yeah. parts and all the changes in the songs. Yeah. And you know, all we need is like two or three rehearsals for that. And we're we'll good. You and know, I, so yeah, that that means that that means that that as well shows how connected and close you are with each other because sometimes. You need like eight months of prep of preparing rehearsal and then and then and then and then that's but no no we uh we literally it's funny because we, we we joke about it we usually need about two practices to knock the knock the dust off yeah. that's it yeah. and then we just get on stage and we have fun that's that's so. the best thing ever now and since you mentioned the stage of course because there's always like i said all the time there might be new people just seeing Kiki Valentina this is in interview for the first time and like wait I want to know more about that so if uh of course we speak about uh you hear me because I don't see you anymore yeah you're cutting you're oh. cutting in and out oh there you are okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna walk outside because my my reception in my house isn't good so I'm gonna sit outside okay okay it's, it's, okay. it's, it's like 80 it's like 80 degrees today so 80 degrees okay it's hot. Weird. It's warm. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's say this part is going to be, we'll, we'll cut it out. So anyway, what I was saying, what the fan uh, can be, ex, uh, uh, um, let's say, um, a spot I can, from a live show of Kikin Valentina. Because of course, like we were saying, you were mentioning about the stage, it is amazing chemistry between all of you. So how does a show of Kikin Valentina look like? A lot of energy. A lot of energy, a lot of smiles, a lot of girls dancing, and a lot of dudes fist pumping, making noise, making noise. Oh, we, yeah, there's a there's a good uh, fan interaction bit too. Wow! But um, you know, we try to uh, we try to involve the audience and the crowd yeah. and stuff like that as much as possible. Breakdowns, you know, sing alongs, that kind of stuff. You know, you you go to a concert to have a good time and enjoy yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're not political at all. Oh. We are not. I, there's no policy, no political BS at all. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. stand. I can't stand bands that. No, I mean, I, I'm, you know, the same. I'm the same. I'm the same. We yeah, have there's be. there's no need for that. There's you know, I know no. you think you can use yeah. your platform for politics, but no, thank you. You know what no, I'm saying? No, I think music should bring people together, not to divide people. It, it, that's 100 okay. percent correct. And that's why we do what we do. Yeah. And that's I mean, I think people can perceive it. But of course, yeah. like, always be um, stay on that live show theme. You're going in some, you're planning some tour, some release shows, some party shows for the release. I don't know. There's some, what's going on? What's boiling in the pot of the live shows for Kiki Valentino? Um, we've got a record release party April 27th here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, that'll probably sell out. Uh, we always do very well here. Uh, we have... Our tour starting, we leave three days after that show and fly to Milan. Oh, so you know? you're going to be straight. Okay. 
Yeah. So April 27th, we have the show here. And then uh, May 2nd is yeah. our show in Milan. And then we do Milan, uh, Met Bar in Lenzburg. Okay. And then we do Johnny's in Trubach. And then we do Culture yeah. Fabrique in Vatican. And then we go up north. You know, or we're going to do Nordic Noise. We get to play with our buddies, our buddies in Bullet and Crash Diet and Crazy Licks. Crash um, Diet, Martin Sweet. I love the, 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 as a bass player, one of my favorites all the time. Yeah, that's a, Crash Diet's a, a good band. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm upset that, I'm upset that Gabriel left, but I'm friends with John from Confess too, and that's who filled in. So, uh, you know, all, all good. Sweden has an amazing scene, that's for sure. Like uh, Sweden, yeah, seems absolutely insane. The heavy shit is great. The commercial glam stuff is great. You know, Eclipse, yeah. Heat, Crash Diet, Hardcore Superstar. Those are like our brothers. Yeah. I, I absolutely love those guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, Sister. You know, you have well. yeah, so I mean, so many bands, so many yeah. bands, and of course, Kiki and Valentina too. Because I mean, come on, you are like the the, the one that keeping that. Let's say this, like I was telling you before, that this this light continuum of this um, sounds a strip light because every one of us dreamt to be in that, you know, like every one of us that loved that period, that era, that golden era, that we want to be. I was born in the fucking 80s. I, I had the chance to leave that. I had the chance to talk with a musician, but never, I'd heard the stories of from Mianko Matijevich, from everyone, but actually never just, and you're keep you're giving the possibility to the people to relieve it. Not just only, you know, not the places, but the energy of that, the energy of that period. Yeah. So, yeah. so I would say if someone wants to still feel what, I, what it could be, maybe being, in that golden era of the, let's say, of the music, this art, this lazy glam, just go to some fucking live or kicking Valentina. Everywhere it is, doesn't matter if it's a Sunset Strip or is a, in Europe, just it's gonna be insane. And I'm really, and uh, just coming back to the release of the album, like we said, it's gonna be out on the 19th of um, April and it's gonna be released in digital copies or, or only MP3. Um, we're doing digital, CD, okay. vinyl. We're okay. doing all of it. Yeah, we uh, we sell a lot of vinyl. It's crazy how much vinyl we sell. That's I don't important. know if it's a collector's thing. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'm with you. I uh, nah. merchandise is a big deal for us. We do very well in merch, so yeah, you know, we uh, like a, we hope to uh, yeah, just I mean, that's how as well you go moving on as well because even making a vinyl or making a CDs nowadays is not like before. It's that's an effort behind it. It's a, oh, an effort it's that, a yeah. And it's expensive. Yes. <laughs> and people complain sometimes, but I think it's a piece of thing of this of history of the band if, if you are really a true fan of that that you have you would like to have. So and as well support the, the artist. Let's say it support the artist. Yeah no Seriously, like all you people out there listening, buy our records. It's important. We need the money. <laughs> oh, but that is true. That is true. That is something that I was talking with. Uh, I don't know if you ever met him, Jalalis from Cat and Boots and Abby Bones. Did you say Cats and Boots? Yes. J Are they still around? Jalalis is a close friend of mine. Kind of, let's say, really, oh, really close friend. That uh, shoot 'em up Sally song is badass. Yes, <laughs> and I re and now he released uh, an amazing, you know, like the unreleased song of Abby Bones, the other project he had, and he's put yeah. a lot of effort, and people were complaining about the money and this and that, and he said like, I didn't know all the effort. These are what you ask, so I'm there to, I know what he all the effort he put, and I can imagine as well like all the effort like band like for example, you kick and Valentina, every band in the world put so. Let's spread this message. Even if a vinyl or CD is, is three euro most, come on, how many times we spent money in uh, alcohol or cigarette or I don't know, stupid things sometimes. If we are one Plane night, tickets. yeah. Well, if one night we don't go outside and we just keep the money apart, you can just add, you know, I can buy the 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 the, the, the album of Kiki and Valentina, the vinyl, for example. And it's a way to support the band, and it's the way that the band yeah. is here ten years by now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, you know, post COVID 
yeah. to go out and tour. Everybody has inflated their prices everywhere. Exactly. Not to mention gas is up, hotel exactly. rooms are up, yeah. tour bus rentals are up, backline rentals are up. Yeah. You know, venues aren't paying more. Ticket yeah. prices are up, but bands aren't making more. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 crazy. Um, yeah. It'll uh, hopefully it'll 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 level out. It I hope. With, yeah, I think with the time it will change a little bit, a little bit. But man, so Jimmy, it was really a pleasure meeting you. And I so, like I always say, I always want to thank to Fernando because it's the one that from Adi Music has always gave me the best band ever. So let's always give a huge shout out to him always. And uh, looking forward to see you around Europe and. We should guys to be always to have this light on you and go throughout 10, 20, 30 years of making this music because it's what makes us happy during the fucking I appreciate time. that. Thank, thank you so much. Try to come to our show in Milan if you can get yeah, up there. Yeah, I will try. I will try. I'm going to be in Milan in the end of, of April, so I'm going to try. So thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay. Really. Right on. It was a pleasure. And touch. Uh, and see you soon then. Thank you so much. Oh, and we thank you. you to your cat and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right on, thank you. Bye bye. bye, bye.